look at how do we organize your hypothesis test, aka what is phantoms. So when we work through these problems in my stats class, we need to be very, very organized in what we're doing with these problems. There's a lot of different particular steps that need to be shown, and without them, uh, your problem kind of falls apart. So they're all very, very important. So just like with confidence intervals, we have panic to organize ourselves and the various pieces we need. For hypothesis testing, we're going to use this acronym phantoms. Okay. So I'm going to go through what every single piece is and what its purpose is. So for phantoms, the first thing we're going to start off with P, which is parameter. P is our parameter. What we're going to do is we're basically going to define what is the focus of our test. What are we even talking about in the context of the problem? We're going to start with that. Next, we're going to move on to H, which is a very, very important step. Uh, it's our hypothesis, our hypothesis. Uh, there's going to be two types of hypothesis. The first is what the population claim is. So what is someone claiming about the population? Write that down. That is going to be your null hypothesis. This is what we are assuming is true. You're also going to write down a second hypothesis, which is the alternative hypothesis. This is what we are trying to prove. So if someone claims an average is 50, that would be our population claim. What our alternative is, is what we're trying to prove. I believe it's less than 50. I believe the average is bigger than 50, or I just don't believe it is equal to 50. The next piece, which a lot of students skip over, but oh my gosh, it's so, so crucial, is the assumptions. This is going to make sure our distribution is constructed well. The formula we're gonna use here is based on a sampling distribution, okay? So we're constructing a distribution and without that distribution being constructed well, the math isn't going to check out. The formula we use is essentially going to fall apart. Different assumptions are tied to different pieces in the formula. So without the assumptions, the formula is pretty much worthless to us. So very, very important. Once we know our assumptions are all checked off and good, that means you can proceed with the problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on to N and we're going to name the test. Because the assumptions are true, I can now do whatever hypothesis test. So we are going to say, what are we doing? What type of hypothesis test are we trying to accomplish? After we name what test we are doing, we're going to move on to T, which is the test statistic part. This is where the math happens. The different formulas we have for our various different hypothesis tests this is where the math happens, and we're going to do that here. Once we have a test statistic, we're going to have typically Z or T scores here. We're going to obtain a p-value. That is the O of, fam of phantoms. Obtain a p-value. This one's a little bit tough to kind of talk uh, in generalities, a little bit easier to see when we get into specific problems. But the best way I could define it is it's the probability we can get our sample assuming the null hypothesis is true. So we're assuming the null hypothesis is true. We're going to figure out what is the probability that I go out and get a sample that the average is 27 or whatever. So what is the probability of attaining the sample we just got? Okay, again, a little bit tough to explain until we jump into examples. And then we finally have our last two pieces of phantoms, which they're two different pieces, but they work together. The M is going to be make a decision. The S is state the context. So for the make a decision, this is where once we have all of our information and evidence laid out, we're going to decide, do we believe in our population claim or not? Do we believe the null hypothesis or have we shown enough to be like, no, 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 I don't believe it. So this is where we're going to reject or fail to reject. And then we're going to state some context. Based on whatever decision I made, what does this all mean? Okay, what does this all mean for someone that actually is going to sit down and read this problem and they're like, I don't know anything about statistics. What did I just read? You're going to explain what does this all mean in the statistical, or uh, sorry, in the context of the problem. So if you rejected or failed to reject, reject, okay, so did we have sufficient evidence to prove the alternative or not? Did we do enough to prove what I was trying to prove in my alternative or not? Okay, those are all of my pieces of a good hypothesis test. Again, we're going to follow through on phantoms. Parameter, then hypothesis, then assumptions. Name what you're doing, then do the test, obtain a p-value, 
make a decision, and then finally state your context. And if you follow through all those pieces, you're going to have a well-constructed hypothesis testing problem, and you should do well on this stuff. Uh, in my next and future videos, we're going to go into details of what does phantoms look like for specific situations. So again, that is how you organize your hypothesis test.